Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So I'm back for another Roscoe's recap and this viewing party was for season 16 episode 6 and the guest this week was Geneva Carr. Today we're going to be talking about the unaired confrontation between Geneva and Plain Jane in Untucked, whether Geneva thinks that her lip sync against Maya was orchestrated by production because they're friends, and Roscoe's addresses the accusations that they always seem to have the eliminated queen on the episode that they go home. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. So they started off with Naisha saying that every week they talk about the queen's outfits and sometimes they say negative things about the queen's looks, but so far they've never had a queen confront them at Roscoe's about something that they said at a previous viewing party. Naisha did say though that one queen did call Naisha personally and confronted her about what she had said about her, and Naisha told the queen that she said it because it's true. Naisha didn't say who it was, but then she said that it's not Derek Barry, and everyone laughed, because Naisha and Derek have had feuds in the past, and Naisha said that she and Derek are in a good place. They then talked about Amanda's elimination last week, and Naisha said that from their perspective, they felt that Amanda beat Q in the lip sync, and so Amanda's elimination was unfair, and they asked Geneva's opinion about it. Geneva said she thought that Amanda was going to win the lip sync and performed better than Q, but she said that it's RuPaul's drag race, so ultimately it's RuPaul's decision. Naisha then asked the audience who they thought won the lip sync, and when she said Amanda, people agreed that she won, and when she said Q's name, no one said anything, and Naisha said, quote, for YouTube, there was crickets when I said Q. Naisha then said that she felt like Amanda's elimination was, quote, rigor Morris, or in other words, rigged, and asked Geneva if she felt that track record played a part in Q winning. Geneva said that perhaps RuPaul saw Q's runway look so far and was more interested to see more of them compared to Amanda. And Geneva also said that Q had been doing so well in the competition and had been crying every week about being high and everyone laughed. Naisha said that the good thing about the Roscoe's viewing parties is that the audience get to know the queens a bit more and you hear about stuff that didn't make it on the show. And she asked Geneva if there was something that happened on Drag Race that she wished had been shown but wasn't. Geneva said that she was very, quote, spicy with the girls, but they didn't show any of that. And Geneva joked and said that maybe the show didn't want to, quote, make her a bee like plain Jane. They then got to the moment in the episode when Geneva had to start all over again and make a new outfit for herself and the doll. And Naja asked how she was feeling in that moment. Geneva said that she's very fast, so she felt like she could make a second outfit, and Geneva also said that the fabric that Plain Jane had asked for before had already been cut up, and Geneva joked and said, quote, I wasn't going to give the fabric to Plain anyway, I'm not going to use it, but you're not going to have it either. Caramel then asked if Geneva was nervous that three of the queens all used the same fabric. Geneva said that she was trying to see if the other queens would get nervous and change their fabric once they saw that Geneva was also using the same fabric as them, and this is apparently a pageant tactic. But because the other queens were already half done with their outfits, none of them changed. And apparently Plain Jane was, quote, pressed that Geneva had taken the red fabric originally but was now not using it. And Geneva said, quote, well, you're turning new leaves, just forget about it. Which is clearly a jokey reference to earlier in the episode when Plain Jane said that she was turning over a new leaf and she was going to stop being so mean to the other queens. They then asked Geneva who she got on with best from the cast and Geneva said that she's really close to Maya Iman LePage. And they also asked who Geneva is the least close with. Geneva said that after the show, she wasn't that close to Q or Plain Jane, but then after the show, she got closer to them both, but more so Q. Whereas Plain Jane only pops up every now and then, and it was implied as though they don't speak that often. They then brought up what Geneva had said in the first episode about her styling her leg hair and becoming famous on TikTok because of it, and they asked Geneva how that happened. Geneva said that she used to host a night at a bar, and one night it was circus theme, so she wanted to do a bearded look, and she also wanted the legs to be the focal point. And a wig designer helped her style her leg hair, and she filmed it and put it on TikTok, and then went to sleep, and when she woke up the video had gone viral and had millions of views. They then got to the runway for this week, and the challenge was that the queens had to create an outfit for themselves and also a matching outfit for a doll. 
and during Geneva's runway, they showed the judges looking unimpressed, and Neisha asked if that was what it was really like. Geneva said she doesn't remember the judges looking like that, but she said, quote, we'll go with that, and Neisha said that they always like to, quote, F around with the editing on the show. They then went through and asked Geneva's opinion on the other Queen's runway outfits, and when they got to Maya, Geneva said that she didn't like it. Neisha then said, quote, You know the effed up part is that someone else did that for her, which was referring to the fact that earlier in the episode, they had shown that Safira Cristal was the one that helped Maya to make the outfit. And everyone laughed, and Caramel said that she hadn't even thought about it like that, and Geneva said, quote, Sabotage. And Neisha joked and said she doesn't know if it was sabotage, but, quote, that bleep was effed up, and she said that she would have been annoyed if that's what someone had made for her. And they joked that Maya should have gone back to Safira and asked her to make the outfit again, but this was just a joke and wasn't meant seriously. They then talked about Ninfia Wynn's outfit, and Geneva said, quote, I told y'all she's a liar. And Geneva said that Nymphia always says she's so stressed and doesn't know what to do, but then she always ends up doing something amazing. And Nymphia only got away with doing that once, but then no one believed her after that. Naisha said that she thinks it's also hilarious that Michelle has told Morphine to stop relying on the BBL, but then she hasn't told Nymphia to stop with the yellow and the bananas. And Geneva said, quote, they pick and choose. They then asked Geneva if she agreed with the judges' critiques this week, and Geneva said she's learned to accept that the judges have their opinions, but she agreed with several of the critiques and knew that she was likely going to be lip-syncing. But Caramel said that often the judges say one or two critiques that are constructive, but then they say even more critiques that seem to step too far, and she asked Geneva if she agreed. And Geneva agreed and said that the judges didn't mention anything about the story voiceover that Geneva had done and they only focused on her look, whereas with other queens the judges did talk about the story and how good it was. Geneva also said that she lip-synced on every single episode that she was on Drag Race because she won the first week and lip-synced for the win, and then she was in the bottom every other week except for last week which was the girl group challenge, but that still involved a lip-sync. They then talked about when Safira Cristal used her immunity potion and everyone was gagged, and Geneva said she thought that maybe Safira was going to use it to save Maya because she had been helping Maya in the episode. But when Safira chose to use it for herself, Geneva thought, quote, you just wasted it for nothing. But Geneva added and said, quote, plain being plain was like a mosquito in her ear saying that Safira should use it. And Naisha said she thinks that because Safira is such a perfectionist normally, she was worried that the judges would read her for this look because it wasn't up to her usual standards. And Naisha also said that Plain Jane was, quote, stirring the pot and saying, you suck, girl. And Geneva said she thought it was funny when Plain Jane said, quote, do you know who I think needs to use the immunity potion today? And Geneva said that only Plain and Safira had the immunity potions, so it was obvious who she was talking about. And Geneva joked and said, quote, dumb ho. They then asked Geneva if she agreed with the judges' critiques in general this week, and Geneva said that she felt like they should have more dolls with different body types, and said, quote, why do the skinny girls get an advantage? And this is presumably referring to some of the comments that the judges made. For example, the guest judge, Law Roach, said that Geneva's doll had the legs of RuPaul, whereas Geneva had the legs of Danny DeVito. Geneva also said that they had to write and record the story voiceover themselves, and she was about to go to bed after she had finished making her doll, but then she remembered that she had to write the story. So she had to stay up and plan and write the story, which meant that she only got about 45 minutes of sleep that day. They then got to the moment in the episode when Geneva was eliminated, and everyone cheered and clapped for Geneva. Naisha then asked Geneva what was going through her head when she had to lip sync against Maya, and Geneva said it was her third time in the bottom and she knew how good Maya is as a performer. And although Geneva won't say that she, quote, gave up, she knew that it was, quote, her time because she was tired of getting negative critiques all the time. And Geneva clarified that the kiss that she gave Maya after the lip sync was actually on the cheek and not on the lips and she also implied as though it wasn't as long as it appeared on TV. Caramel then said that during the lip sync, Maya's breastplate and her outfit were coming apart, and she asked Geneva if she thought that that might count against Maya in the lip sync. 
Geneva said yes, but she also felt like because it was Maya's first time lip syncing and showing the judges her flipping and being in her element, she thinks that RuPaul may have overlooked those things. They then moved on to Untucked, and at one point, Plain Jane randomly asked Plasma how she felt about the judges saying that they're rooting for her to improve her makeup, and Plasma wasn't very impressed by this. And Nasha said, quote, Look, say what you want about this B, but I'm enjoying Plain Jane, and people in the audience cheered. Nasha also said that she's a fan of Plain Jane, and she can understand why people don't like her, but Nasha also said, quote, If everything was kumbaya, we would be like, what the F, where's the drama? Nasha also asked if there was any more of the exchange in Untucked between Plain Jane and anyone else that didn't get shown in the episode. And Geneva said what actually happened was that after Plain Jane made that comment to Plasma about her makeup, Geneva defended her and said to Plain Jane, quote, Why are you talking? You're pale. You could use a little more blush. And Plain Jane apparently said, quote, Well, you're going to be in the bottom, whatever. And Geneva replied and said, quote, Well, I can't wait for you to crash and burn. Geneva also said that Plain was trying to come for everyone and Plain was, quote, gagged when Geneva clapped back at her. And although they showed some of this interaction between Plain Jane and Geneva, they didn't show what happened before, they only showed Geneva's reaction, so Geneva was just giving some context to set up what actually happened, but all of that bit got cut in the episode, which made it look like Geneva came for Plain Jane out of nowhere, but that's not actually what happened. And Geneva joked that when Plain was coming for Plasma, Geneva said, quote, Now Amanda left, Plasma is your next target, F off. Nasha said she loves the cast of this season because it feels like it's the cast versus Plain Jane, but Geneva said it was actually Plain Jane versus the cast. And Nasha said it takes a certain type of person to be able to take all of that from people, even though Plain brings it on herself. Geneva then joked that Plain Jane is used to people, quote, taking turns with her, and then joked that Plain Jane was like a doorknob. And Nasha asked when was the last time that Geneva spoke to Plain, and Geneva said, quote, last night, and she added that she and Plain are good. They then watched the part of Untucked when Geneva was packing up her things and left the show, and Nasha said that this was the perfect time to bring something up. And Nasha said that people have been talking a lot and saying that Roscoe's always happen to book the queen that gets eliminated on the week that they get eliminated, and it gives away spoilers about the season. And this is something that they did touch on in the last viewing party. But Nasha said that there is no, quote, strategic way that they book the guests, and the guests themselves are the ones who choose what week it is they want to come to Roscoe's based on their schedule. And Nasha said that in her opinion, the Roscoe's bar is always so full of love and support, and when queens are at Roscoe's on the week that they get eliminated, they often leave in tears because they feel the love from the room. And that's why Nasha thinks a lot of the queens choose to be at Roscoe's on the episode that they go home. Nasha also promised that they do not book the queens based on when they go home. But Nasha added that she gets messages from people all the time saying things like, quote, If you're going to do this, then I'm not going to watch. And Nasha said, quote, Well, don't effing watch then. And everyone cheered. They then moved on to the Q&A, and an audience member asked if they feel as though the judges contradict themselves. Geneva said, in her opinion, yes, the judges do contradict each other because one judge will say one thing, but then another judge will say something completely different. But Geneva said that other times she doesn't remember things happening the way that they actually portray it on TV. But Geneva joked and obviously didn't want to say anything too bad about the show, and she said, quote, It's all a blur in the experience, right? We have to be good for all stars. Nasha then said that her career with Drag Race is obviously over, presumably because she's called out the show and production on several occasions, and so Nasha said that she can tell you the real tea. And Nasha said that not only do the judges contradict themselves, but the judges always seem to use the critiques that the contestants have said about themselves earlier in the episode. Nasha gave some examples and said that this week, Q had said that she picked a different colour fabric to everyone else because she wanted to stand out. And then the judges had pretty much said the exact same thing word for word during the critiques. Nasha then said, quote, What did I say the week before? They're always listening. Nasha then said that also, if you say things like, quote, I'm just not good at finishing a hem, then the judges are going to use that in their critiques. And Nasha said that the judges sit so far back, there's no way that they can actually see the hem. But because the contestants said it themselves earlier in the episodes and the queens are always miked, the show picks up on things like that and then tell the judges to say that during their critiques. 
And Nisha said that this was, quote, iffy and that they're always trying to pull some, quote, bull bleep. And finally, another audience member said that RuPaul loves to stir the pot. So, does Geneva think that her friendship with Maya was part of the reason that they were put in the lip sync together? And Geneva said that she had said to Hershey Le Courgette that she didn't want to ever lip sync against her, and then that episode she ended up lip syncing against her. And she also said the same thing to Maya, and then she ended up lip syncing against Maya too. And Geneva joked and said, quote, so, you know, coincidences happen a lot in this world. And she also said that you should, quote, give people what they want, maybe. And it sounded like Geneva was implying as though they do use that sort of friendship to make sure they put people against each other in the lip sync. So there you go. There was the Roscoe's recap for season 16, episode 6. Did you agree with the elimination of this week? And who do you think is going to win the season? Let me know in the comments. And I just want to take this moment to say thank you so much to my incredible Patreon members. In the You're a Winner Baby tier, we have Christian, Emerald1508, Ethan, Lisa, PC Smush, and Rochelle. And then in the Shantae You Stay tier, we have Amy, Becky, Charlie, David, Linda, Shelby, and Craig. Thank you so much. I really do love my Patreon community. You're all such great supporters and it really does make such a massive difference to my channel. So thank you all so, so much. And if you'd like to get early access to my videos such as this one, as well as a raft of other benefits, please consider joining my Patreon and supporting my channel and I'll put a link in the description. Please make sure you like, comment and share this video as it really helps support my channel. And of course, please make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date about new uploads. Thanks again for watching and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!